video on epilepsy, autism, and mostly epilepsy and autism. So both of these are just close to my heart because I have a, a family member who has epilepsy and who's, who's had it her entire life and I've seen the way that it affects someone and I've worked with multiple people and seizures are um, crippling in a way. You know, you can't drive sometimes, you can't really um, live a normal life if you're comparing it to others. Now, I have seen this person make immense progress and it's super encouraging, but it, it has been, it's just really close to my heart. So I've worked with multiple people with um, epilepsy, I'll start there. Sometimes it's autism and, and seizures. Um, sometimes the two go hand in hand, but I'm just going to talk about epilepsy. You need ketones. Your brain runs more efficiently on ketones. So there's a really cool study. They measured brain cells. They were measuring brain cells that had been damaged by seizures, I believe, but they were damaged brain cells. And they saw that these brain cells, only like two of 48 functioned properly when running on glucose. But all 48 of these brain cells ran almost perfectly normally on ketones. So basically, your brain runs more efficiently on fat. It loves it and it's anti-inflammatory. Now, yes, we do need some level of glucose and the body creates its own glucose via gluconeogenesis. And I have a video on gluconeogenesis if you don't know what that is, but essentially it's when your liver produces glucose for the body. Um, from stored glycogen. And this is why everyone's afraid of eating protein because they think it turns into sugar in their bloodstream, but it's not that simple. So please watch my video on gluconeogenesis. When you have epilepsy, your central nervous system very well may be involved. It almost always is. And when someone is healing their central nervous system or someone is stuck in a chronic state of flight fight mode, then you are more likely to be going into gluconeogenesis and that will spike your blood sugar, it can, and that can trigger a seizure. So, for people with epilepsy, I would actually say stick with moderate protein. It kind of depends on how severe the case is. If it's very severe, then I would say hit your lower range of protein, and that's a recommendation I almost never make because I'm always saying one gram of protein per pound of desired body weight. Um, and that is what I would say to people who have their epilepsy semi under control, but they're still wanting healing and more freedom and freedom from these seizures. I would say one gram of protein per pound of desired body weight, but two to one fat to protein in grams. That's double the fat. If someone is really, really struggling and needs extra help, basically extra ketones, then do lower protein but that's only going to be for a time. Lower protein is not sustainable, according to me. And you can disagree, but I've unfortunately had so many people come to me from other coaches in this space or groups who are recommending lower protein and high fat, and they've crashed their thyroids, their hair is falling out, they're hangry, they lost muscle, they got skinny fat, they're not sleeping. So it's it's not sustainable. Protein is wonderful and we all need it, even people with epilepsy. So if you're going to do the lower approach, that would be 0.8 times your lean body mass. To break that down, you could multiply your current weight times your body fat percentage, an estimate works. Take that number and subtract it from your total weight. That is your lean mass. You multiply that number times 0.8 and that's how many grams of protein you should be hitting per day. That is the amount that is the bare minimum needed to protect your lean mass, the lower acceptable range in my book, and that is what I would recommend for someone who's really, really struggling. And then I would also do two to one fat to protein. I went all the way up to four to one fat to protein um, at one point in my healing journey because I was having non-epileptic seizures, I believe due to chronic Lyme disease, I was bed bound for a time, and doing the four to one fat to protein allowed me to no longer be bed bound, but I was still very much struggling. When I started carnivore, I was doing four to one for a short time, and then I was able to scale back to three to one, two to one, I did two to one fat to protein for quite a while. The whole year that I did just lamb, salt, and water, it was basically two to one fat to protein in grams. That is very therapeutic. You will have to become fat adapted for this to work, and so if this individual is struggling with it, I have a video on fat adaption to help with that. But um, in terms of fat to protein ratio with epilepsy, 
two to one is um, the lowest fat to protein ratio that I would recommend. Two to one all the way up to four to one depending on severity. And then the protein is gonna range from 0.8 times lean body mass all the way up to one gram per pound of desired body weight depending on the severity. Watch out for spices. Even things like chili powder, um, onion powder, they can contain sugar, they can contain trace amounts of carbohydrates, which can trigger seizures. Watch out for humidity. Humidity triggers seizures. Watch out for flashing lights. You guys might already know this if you have epilepsy or your loved one has epilepsy, but these are triggers to the central nervous system and someone with epilepsy. And then of course, stress. Check out my video on central nervous system healing, which is um, just top, my top tips on regulating your stress levels and your central nervous system because it is all connected. Sometimes just emotional um, stress can trigger a seizure. Now, autism is gonna be very, very similar. However, I believe that autism, there is a very clear link between oxalate and autism. Oxalate are tiny crystals that can embed themselves into every cell of your body and we see links between high oxalate diets and children with autism and so just I would say go as low oxalate as possible if you experience oxalate dumping I have a video on that I have a video on oxalate so please check that out so basically the fat to protein ratio would be very similar I do think that um, many people do well even at a 1.5 to 1 fat to protein ratio with autism and it's mostly about removing the anti-nutrients and nourishing on the most bioavailable form of nutrients, which is animal foods coming from fat and protein. For both instances, epilepsy and autism, I don't think dairy is great, and I don't think that polyunsaturated fats are great. Pork and chicken, I would keep minimal, and I would really emphasize the saturated fats coming from ruminant animals. I would highly recommend doing something like lamb. Also, histamine. Histamine can trigger seizures, histamine intolerance, I should say. I think even people with autism, they could definitely be more sensitive and have some histamine intolerance, just like anyone else. Honestly, histamine intolerance is pretty normal. These days, I see so many people dealing with histamine issues and they didn't know it was histamine, so lamb is gonna be good for that because it's a smaller animal, which means less histamine. If you want non-aged meat, check out North Star Bison or Billy Doe Meats. Both of those are non-aged. And my discount code is tailored. Electrolytes are gonna be very important. Our brains run on electromagnetic frequencies, so please be sure you're on top of those. I have a video on electrolytes as well. And um, those are the main things. Those are the main things. I hope this helps. Mm -hmm.